So for um, my computer to recognize that I actually have the have it up it hasn't recognized it yet so I'm just gonna wait a few seconds more also I apologize to the people who saw my latest video and was like hey it's not part 194 um, when I made into a video yeah it's fixed now so now I have it right it's part 196 so anyone who was a little bit confused I'm sorry about that but it's fixed now anyway um also thank you to the new person who subscribed to me um I welcome you and the rest of all my subscribers and even the people who aren't subscribed to the next part of this let's play which is part 197 of the Yu-Gi-Oh Master let's play pretty cool wow I I'm so far into it now like and it's amazing how like h how many videos I I've made so far and it's not even just 197 because a lot a lot of my videos like before I decided to make everything into a let's play like they're not even labeled as a let's play so th that brings my Yu-Gi-Oh Master content way p well past 197 well past 200 even crazy yeah Anyway, I think I'm gonna stick with this, especially it's especially seems good because now there's three more gates added. Oh man, I'm already be a little bit behind, and now there's even three more, which I'm not exactly understanding about the Eldritch picture because there's already an Eldritch gate. It can't. I don't know what that Eldritch is doing there trying to sneak his way in just because he's royalty you're not allowed a second gate just I don't care if you're royalty why do you get a second gate huh it might be just like more to the story anyway um yeah so <clears throat> please like share and subscribe and and this may or may not be true, but I mean the people who might have subscribed who liked the Cyber Dragons, you never know. This may or may not be because you subscribe to my channel. So maybe if you want your favorite archetype game made into a solo mode, maybe you should try subscribing and then maybe in the coming few months. I don't know. Maybe it's a result of that. Maybe it's not, but you never know unless you maybe try it. And then I guess you still won't know. So I can't <laughs> say it's true or not. But hey, maybe try it out. All you have to do is hit the subscribe and it even helps you um, get notified of my videos. Which is pretty nice. You could even tailor it to how you like. Um, I do put m one of the special videos inside the special playlist so it's not totally useless picking personalized. And there's always the all if you're really a fan of me or if you just watch my content, help me out. And I, th I especially think, um, I like every, I, I thank everyone, but especially the people who may not necessarily being all about my master content. But I think that's pretty much what I'm going to do. So, for those of you who, like, did enjoy my other videos, um... I mean, maybe you could still get through those, but I think I'm just going to stick to Mastel because I think that's easy enough. Maybe once I get to more subscribers, like a lot more subscribers, I could like um, be more of a variety channel. But for now, I'm just going to do Mastel, let that build up my subscriber base, be more of a sort of a Yu YouTuber, but more of a, like a virtual video game Yu YouTuber sort of thing. But I guess like... If I'm only playing mass, so I'm not sure how good that is. But I don't really care much either way. Just trying, to, especially like if I somehow get a job. I don't know if that's gonna come or not, but maybe it'll happen. Maybe I'll get lucky. And if I do, then it's it's a good thing that I don't have all my eggs into the YouTube basket. Because then I'll be able to like, because I'm already not doing a lot where like I can fo where I could focus my efforts on a job if I had one. 
anyway, um, I guess if anyone has any entry level positions, maybe you could, I could give you my resume at least. I don't know. Anyway, not really caring too much. Not like I really need the money anyway. Um, I should probably start now. I think I gave people enough time to get in. It's been about five minutes. That's good. Let's go. Th let's start going through the news. But before that, I better um put down the the verse so that maybe we can work on a discussion later, if you want. There we go. That's the verse for today. At least the one that I found on you, Virgin. Which, I'm sure it's a good one. But we'll look in more into that later. This is a pretty exciting day for Mastodor. Um, because there's been a few things added besides the new gates coming. There's also been a few secret packs added. Which may or may not have anything to do with the Solomon gates. Um, yeah, but that... But maybe that's another chance of being able to get a few cards for specific archetypes I want without necessarily having to um, utilize your CP just to unlock them. So that can be kind of nice. And also it gives you a free pack. Maybe it, like a few no, new ones added. So Lona Deck Trial. So here's another Lona Deck. So there's also this which kind of takes the place of the solo mode too. So that makes it a little bit longer as well, but that's okay because I may not always have the decks ready for solo mode, so I'm not really opposed to this kind of stuff at all. Looks like... Oh, I guess you can u choose between three different loner decks. I think what it is is they say, like, you can either get all your wins with a Cyber Dragon loner deck, a uh, Evil Twin loner deck, or an Eldritch Loner deck. Or, if you want, which I'm probably going to be doing, is I'm going to just be getting one win with each. Of course, you could get two wins with one, one win with another. Basically, pick however you want. Either way, you'll get the prize at the end. Ooh, that's cool. As per the current, did... Part of the extravagance go from one to two? Oh no, I think what it's saying is that like um the Eldritch Lone deck it's not gonna adhere all the way to the um Forbidden Limitless restrictions. I don't I don't think they're saying that um part of extravagance is coming off the list to two copies. Um so don't get your hopes up, I would say, for that. Because I don't think that's what they're saying at all. It's still going to be at one copy, just that the loan deck um, is going to be at... It's going to make it at two as a special thing. Probably just to make it around the same power level as the other decks. Because they want all the loan decks to be around the same power level. Especially since you have to choose the loan decks, like... I mean, they don't always do that for the festivals when you don't have to necessarily pick the loan decks, but it's probably a little bit more important here since, like, those are really all, all you can use. Anyway, next one is New Gates. El yeah, see, it's saying Eldritch. I guess that's a little bit more story to him. And then Evil Twins and Savage Dragon. So, yeah, basically what the loan deck campaign is about. That's cool. I mean, it wasn't any of the... Strangely enough, the ones that I made the pull for, like... Probably... I think it was one of my very first pulls I have in my community tab. The four, um... The four decks that I made for that pull, I looked back, and the four decks that I made for that... The four archetypes I made in that pull, they still haven't gotten... A solo mode, um, solo mode gate f for any of them yet. Um, so it's strangely enough very, um, relevant, even though it was made like a year ago or something like that. Like, because I have like Flow Wonderies on it, 
Adventurer. I think I put maybe Fobs and then Paleozoic. And none of those have a Solomo gate yet. So yeah, strangely enough, it's still relevant. <laughs> if you just wanted to like vote on the pool. Just just have some fun. I think most of my polls are actually pretty relevant still. Like because a lot of them were just more generic sort of polls. But like that one, it's cool. It's I guess it's kind of cool that it's still relevant. Though it would be nice for at least one of those to at least be given a, a chance. But maybe if you want to still try to get your answer in before it becomes not as relevant. Um, if one of those happens to get a solo mode appearance. You maybe like still vote on it before it before it becomes not as relevant. And here's the secret packs: one for Cyber Dragons, one for I mean Live Twins and Alter Guys. Yeah, see, and then the secret packs are basically to celebrate the the gates as well. That's kind of cool because um you get the secret packs now with one free pack, and then you can also get the secret packs later if you. If you're willing to be patient enough, you can get the secret packs later. You can actually have two opportunities to get the Eldritch secret pack because there's two Solomo gates for this one. But then you still have an extra opportunity for the others to get the to get them to get these guys because you can do the Live Twin um, and the Cyber Dragon. So if you like Alter Guys. Um, or live twins, maybe you could just wait until it disappears and then go through the Solomon gate and then make it appear again. Pretty cool. All you have to do is actually watch the goal scenario. You don't have to go all the way through, you just have to watch the end scenario if you want it to be even quicker. And probably to make it the quickest, just do the my deck duels. The not the lone duels because Generally, using your own deck makes it go faster, because that's usually more, um, I mean, I guess unless you're like a true beginner, but you might not even have it unlocked, because these are one of the later gates, both of these are probably one of the later gates that have to be unlocked, um, by doing a lot of the other gates. Anyway, pretty cool. I don't think there's any new cards added, though. Probably just to celebrate the gates. I think they did sh sort of change up the name. No, I think they're the still the same names, though. Yeah. <laughs> and then, here's another one. This is the one we'll be going over today. I'll be going over all the decks and gameplay for this. Sort of like how I did with the um, Limit 1 Festival. I hear that this is supposed to be less um, competitive. But there's still quite a few good decks out there. Like that, I mean, even though a lot of the really good links and stuff has have been banned. Like SP and uh, IP and... Appaloosa. Like, uh, there's still a lot of really good cards out there. Like, Albaz is pretty much full power. I mean, I don't think Albaz even really cared about those cards much to begin with. Um. Apparently, um, the Dynamorphia is really good too. So, maybe if you want to fight Dynamorphia, you could use one of the loan decks that we'll be showing. That will be shown. If you don't happen to um, have the archetype yourself. Because it's still probably p at least fairly decent enough. And there's a few that you get for some of the later rewards. This one is earlier. This one is like the very last thing. It's nice that like this one arguably being the better looking one. And the more prev. And the more like um, show offy one is the one that you get earlier. So they really know how to do it because they know not everyone's gonna want to make it to the very end. And I don't know, like maybe other people think titles are really good, but I think titles might be like one of the worst accessories. 
Um, I mean, I don't know. They they kind of like they're not very like flashy. I I kind of like the more flashy accessories myself. Anyway, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship 2024. I think we already went over this, kind of. It's kind of just basically like another Duelist Cup, but a little bit different. It, it's, it's better if you, um, actually want to, like, attend the World Championship. But, otherwise, you can probably just treat it as another Duelist Cup. Where maybe you make it to Dolus Cup Stage 2, or maybe you just try to get to where you feel c most comfortable and just get however, however many gems that is. But this is pretty cool, the brain control icon frame. You get... Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a shame that brain control is a lot less powerful than it was. Especially now that, like, these sh sort of, like, effects don't really matter as much. I guess that's the one of the downsides of Arata is because what it, is Konami going to do? Are they going to, like, I mean, technically they could change their mind and bring it back to its regular attacks again. But then people might think, like, well, why'd you have to change in the first place? And now it's, like, the, the ones with the oldest attacks, like... That's how they were before. So people are just going to know. So I feel like... yeah, I don't know. To me it kind of seems like companies kind of put themselves in a pit. If they start like a watering. Because if you have to change it back. Now it's like... Uh, I don't know. Like... I mean I guess you can do it. I mean maybe that's not that much of an issue. Yeah. That's pretty much it for the news right there. I'm going to go over the shop stuff later. I want to get to the... Not the Solomon Gates, but the... Maybe if I have time, I could do some of the solo mode. Like, just get through a little bit more of the non loner deck stuff. Um, so especially since three new gates are coming, I kind of feel like I kind of need to um, maybe put the pedal to metal with that. But for now, let's make sure that we have the missions refreshed and the dole live. Might as well do that real quick. When did I do the news? Man, now I forget when I did the news. Yeah, maybe if the festival doesn't take very long, I could do that kind of stuff. So I started the news, I think, around... Oh, yeah, five... I'll, I'll, I'll just say six minutes. Six minutes. That may be a little off. I can always change it. Oh yeah, and if anyone ever wants to take over as like time stamper, feel free. I would certainly appreciate that. I don't know if I really need to time stamp the duel live. But yeah, if anyone ever wants to feel free to time stamp the stuff that I don't necessarily time stamp either, you can feel free. And if you think it's important enough, then I'll just put it in when it becomes a regular video. So, hey, you can kind of control what kind of timestamps I put in. Maybe that helps make you feel a little bit special. And that's something you can do whether or not you're a subscriber. Yeah, for now, I don't really have slow mode or anything because I don't really need that. I mean, I probably could even without all the... Without... Apparently, if you reach 600, you can, like, start getting some money back, like, more directly from YouTube. But for now, I have my affiliate links. I think I forgot to say that. But, yeah, if you want to help me out right now, you can use my affiliate links. And if you spend a little bit of money, 
um, on stuff that maybe you were already thinking about buying anyway. Like instead of just shopping from TCG Player without using my link, you could now shop through TCG Player with using my link. Of course, it's not just TCG Player, and if you have any suggestions, you can feel free to let me know. Um, yeah. Here's one way to get to the Fusion Link Festival. Of course, you could do it from the main menu too, but it doesn't really matter to me. Here's the final one, but I'm going to the first one first. Oh yeah, it's the very first one. Yeah, this is, um, Unchained is apparently pretty good counter to Altergeist. Maybe it's because they have fairly low attack. And, um, what's cool is that some of these guys can just simply, like, get rid of monsters without actually destroying them. And give you advantage by going to another link. One thing that you do have to think about, though, is that this guy actually isn't a quick effect. So, just make sure you remember that. So, if you, like, um, so if you use Unchained Soul of Rage during your opponent's main phase to go into this guy... Um, and then later on, maybe it's destroyed or something. And you're thinking, should I special summon the Link 3 guy or the Link 2 guy? Well, the Link 3 guy is big. It is a higher Link rating, but the Link 2 guy is the one with the quick effect. It's kind of annoying that the Link 2 guy has a quick effect and the Link 3 one doesn't. But yeah. That's a good one to special summon too. Actually, maybe not, because it is a hard once per turn. But maybe, like, during an... If it's a different turn. It does kind of... It does stink, though, that this one isn't a quick effect. Man, I kind of thought it was the first time I had it, but then I realized, oh, it's actually not. Yeah, so the deck description reads, Enhance Unchained Deck. Many Unchained cards have the effects of calling forth allies when they are destroyed in battle or by effects. So destroying your own cards is an, can be an important tactic. Unchained Soul of Shavava is not only able to be special summoned destroying one card in your own field, but also has the effect of setting one Unchained Spell or Trap from the deck. So make sure to use it, utilize it well. Is it this one? No. This one's a pretty good one though. It allows you to search for an unchained monster. Um, so, um, moreover, if you can link summon unchained soul lord of Yama, yeah, this one. Its effect will make it easier to advance your strategy, understand each flow well, and dominate the flow of the duel. The nice thing about this deck is it's pretty easy to um, basically go through any of your cards because... Um, when basically anything is destroyed, they allow you to pretty much special summon whatever whatever monster you want from the deck, even the higher monsters. So that's pretty nice. But, just keep in mind that a few of these, they don't count if they're destroyed by their own effect. Like, this one can't be destroyed by their own effect. Or it, it also doesn't count. Wait. Oh yeah, this one can also you can also just attack. So sometimes maybe you can just attack and get destroyed there, and then special some something. I guess the nice thing about that is that like maybe if your opponent like was really low on life points and just needed like a single strong attack to win, you could um destroy the ones that can. Be destroy a bow to get uh, unchained, and then special summon when they got a higher attack and chain, like the 3000 guy, and then basically win there. So sometimes, like when you think maybe you don't have a winning position, maybe you actually do. Oh, wait, I forgot to get the timestamp, I need to do that. Um, I think it's I'll just say 2030. 2030. Unchained Soul Unleashed. 
Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, and then supply squad. It's pretty nice. Um, this is something that can that you can just proc yourself, just simply destroying a monster, and then get it get the effect of the unchain, and you also get to draw a card as an added bonus. Um. Oh yeah, one thing you should think about, which I was always thinking about, is the uh, is more important for this one because this one you can't actually put face up, but if you do, um, you can't get the special summon because it has to be set. So just think about that. I would say you, I mean, if you change your mind, you can always flip it up later. So maybe just put it as set first off. And the other ones you don't really have to worry about as much for because um I mean this one you either activating it and then saying it to the graveyard anyway, or for these two you you have to set them anyway before you activate them. So it's really only for this one that sometimes like you can be a little bit confused about. Trust me, I was a little confused about, so if you are too, we're basically just in the same boat. Um, yeah, and then a lot of these, like, have the effect, like, special summon and unchain. So it's really easy to go from one guy to another to another. You have a lot of ways of, like, destroying your own monsters by card effect. Maybe, like, put out a monster before you activate a dark hole. Or maybe, yeah. But you might want to do the dark hole right away, especially if your opponent has scary monsters. Um, yeah. And then Muckcracker can get back some of your fiends. You do have to discard a card for that, though. Chain Abomination can help with the destroying stuff. And then... Yeah, I usually like to, like, don't really care too much about these other Link 2s, although, like... I'm not sure how much this really matters. I probably would rather go for either the Nightmares, or more often than not, the Unchained, or maybe the Muckraker, if I can afford a discard. I mean, maybe I'm going to the Muckraker less often than I should, but I kind of like the other Link 2s a little bit better. The, uh, this one's nice for getting another add. This one's nice for um, being able to use your opponent, getting rid of your opponent's monsters without at triggering any, like, destroy effects. Which is good against a uh, mere match of Unchained because this is like pretty much. And the annoying thing about Unchained is that like a lot of the best cards are going are wanting to destroy, especially a lot of the best cards in the Lona decks and the other Lona decks, and even this one like this one destroys a card on the opponent's field. So a lot of the best cards in the and like each of the loner decks like have like destroy and now you basically don't want to activate them against unchained because unchained like to be destroyed it's kind of like just a better version of fire king yeah and i mean even the dark hole like unchained like to be destroyed so and you don't even really want to activate hoppy's feather duster which is usually one of the best ways to get rid of back row and now Hoppy's Feather Duster can just become advantage against an Unchain if once you know they're playing Unchain. So yeah, it's kind of crazy. That's also kind of why I like the deck. Anyway, yeah, I don't actually have the deck myself, so. But I think I found a, a pretty good deck, though, so. I, but yeah, for anyone who maybe really just hates, um... Dynamorphia, this is apparently a pretty good, maybe not this specific build, but like, it's probably decent enough against the Dynamorphia that maybe it's worth playing out of these other two, out of these other, um, Lona decks here. Yeah, so let's do gameplay now. I can just say 30 minutes gameplay. 30 minutes. Un... I'll just say un gameplay. I don't know. Anyway. 
I can always fix it up later. Yeah, I already got pretty far. And this is gonna basically be pretty much another guaranteed um, 2,000. Because I'm not stopping until I get a win with each. I don't know if I should justify it if there's a man match though. Because I don't think these like lone decks are that difficult to win with probably. And they don't seem that confusing to play. I guess. Um, I need to remember that this one I got confused a little bit. I thought this one could also be activated in hand, but it can. So, if it's a quick, it's a nice quick effect, but it can't be activated in hand. So, I think what I better do is So, this one has to be destroyed not by its own effect in order to get the special summon. So, you don't want to just normal summon it and just destroy it thinking you're going to be able to get its effects. So it's kind of stuff you kind of want to be a little bit careful about. Sucks that I don't really have. This one is also an on-field effect. It also has a graveyard effect, but I don't really have a way of putting it in the grave. So I think pretty much the only thing I can do... I mean, technically I could also... Yeah, so I can also go for these. Maybe I'll just... I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this. Usually the Stygian Street Patrol is probably bad just putting in the graveyard anyway. Like, and like, there's like a lot of other ways you can just get in the graveyard without needing to put on a field first. That probably, that hand probably could have been a bit better. But we'll see if I can still maybe get a win. Oh, looks like... Yeah, I don't think this is a loner deck. I mean, it might, you might be a little bit confused because you're saying, Oh, Memento, or that maybe this is a lone deck. But I guess people have liked the lone decks enough. Or maybe they already had the builds. I guess even outside the lone decks, these must be fairly popular decks, maybe. I don't know. But I don't have to worry about activating the infinite because my opponent doesn't have any memento or cards in graveyard anyway. Wow. My opponent just messed up a little bit. I wonder if it's worth it. I don't know if it is. I think I'm just going to allow it. My opponent might just be trying to bait me. But yeah. Anguish is probably the one you want to negate. Quite a few times my opponent has negated my own Anguish. And like when I was playing the Memento... Uh, Lona deck. I got pretty annoyed about that. <laughs> and for some reason, I f saw a few people not even sporting, like, sleeves. I wonder if, like, they do that on purpose to try to make people think that they're playing a Lona deck. But then if they're doing that, maybe don't play lossy cards, because I think that's another giveaway. But of course, once you play through all the lone decks, you probably have a pretty good idea about which is a lone deck or which and which is not. So I'm not sure how good of a strategy that is anyway. My opponent didn't even destroy. Didn't even try destroying. Might as well do the supply squad. Cause it's, I mean, whether or not I could get it, doesn't really matter too much. Okay. This is pretty good though. I don't think this is this actually ma has to be oh wait but I need to 
Yeah, so what I'm going to do, flip that up because I need its effect. Ah, uh, there's the effect, Vela. Yeah. Maybe I should have known summoned the... Uh, this card first, now that I think about it. Oh, well. I can still just... Yeah. Destroying is a part of the effect. That's okay, though. This seems like a pretty good one. I could go for that, or I, or I actually can't go for the other Link to Unchained. I'm not exactly sure why, but whatever. Hmm. Actually, going for the Muckraker might be one of the better options this time. Because then I can special summon back this one. But then, if I do... Yeah, no, I set the Unchained... And then I can just destroy this guy itself. And when it's destroyed. Oh wait. Oh wait, no, I can do that. Okay, yeah, that, that works. I think I am going to go for the Muckraker. And you don't really have to worry about the summoning restrictions. Because at, at least with Konami... Um, one nice thing about the Lona decks, they're pretty beginner friendly because like they they usually do a pretty good job of making the summoning restrictions not matter because for example like the X deck is probably all fiends anyway. Um, main deck is probably all fiends, so the summoning restriction doesn't literally doesn't matter at all. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, probably should. I don't think it really matters though, but I guess I'll go for this one. I just need something to destroy for the graveyard effect of the one that I discard. Technically, I could also just. Oh, I didn't even think about that. This one was actually the better one anyway. Because now I can special summon this one. Get the effect off of the Rakea. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to do that. And then as an add bonus. I don't want to do that. That's literally going against what I want to do. So. I guess that's another thing. The Muckraker really wants to be activated. But make sure you don't. Because it's usually better just to let the destruction go through. Uh, well, that stinks. Well, at least I can always have another chance with the twins plus a level 6 engrave. And I still get to get the destroy. Ooh. Ooh. I should probably go for this one. Yeah. Because I get to spot summon this anyway. So I better destroy this. No. Yeah, usually you want to pick no. It can still be useful sometimes, like maybe if your opponent's destroying something and you don't want it to be destroyed that early, but usually you want to say no to the Muckraker destruction prevention effect. I better go for the one I think that... This one seems pretty good. I get to destroy a car in the field and I get that other guy in grave. And it's a really high attack monster too, so thinking it's pretty good. I probably want to destroy the face sound card anyway. Get just get rid of that. I have other ways to get to destroy the unchained twins.
cool. Destroy this. Okay. This is my chance to win, so I, I don't want to waste it. Hopefully I don't run out of time, please. I'm just going to do this one. Oh. Well, my opponent just top decking, so it doesn't matter. But I'm also top decking. Ooh, that's nice. I best I guess I better just do go for this one. Well, whatever. And I mean, of course, this one's nice as a lot of attack. Hopefully, I guess it's basically up to a top deck. Good. Looks like it wasn't good enough. Cool. It was trying. I won against a Lona deck copier. Hmm. Unchain makes sense that pe people would probably want to copy that because Unchain is actually I don't exactly know the reason why but apparently it is really good against one of the other top decks like which I haven't really been seeing a lot but maybe other people have been seeing a lot more Dynamorphia but it could also be because I'm not in the highest of highest ranks for a ranked ladder one of the pros of not going to like master rank basically though anyway let's go to the next one so 4230 will be what's the name of this one visitors from beyond oblivion cool okay so the deck description here reads that is that a it's a memento deck, um, containing forgotten beings that have returned to life. Start by using memento and anglet witch, which is the one that can add any memento monster from your deck to your hand. Um, and then Tatsuch no Shigo is also really good because this one can basically be special summon no matter what. The only way it wouldn't be is if you control a non memento monster. But usually, when you're like stalling it out, it's nice as a starter because you shouldn't have a. Just don't go into a non memento monster because, before bringing it out because it's really good. You get you can just destroy itself and then you can like um, send a whole bunch of monsters, low, low, lower level monsters to the grave. And then that that's good for two reasons. Either it fills your grave for the special summon, uh, for the latest special summon of Horn Dragon or this guy. Horn Dragon, I think, is a little bit better because this um for this one you don't have to get rid of the monsters, but for this one you do have to send them back to the deck, which I don't really not like the best. But I mean, if you have you your graveyard filled enough that's probably fine um and then of course you just send the gatic as one of them so you can like special summon it and then like the one of the other mementos you at you sent you can either add that back or one of your maybe spells a trap so you, there's a lot of recursion with this deck which is really nice that's one of the pluses of this deck is that there's like a lot of recursion. Um, okay. Among them, Memento. And, oh yeah, also a few. A lot of the spells and traps also have graveyard effects, which is another reason why maybe like they're good in the graveyard. Um, 
this one has the effect that allows you to add oh this one yeah this one allow some of them have like better ways of helping to be able to get through bow damage even if your opponent is trying to defend um, this one doesn't have a graveyard effect, but this one is probably one of the better graveyard effects. Actually adding you a memento spell or trap. So you can activate it to get a fusion and then really easily add another memento spell or trap. Maybe going for one of the traps to like defend yourself when your opponent's going now. Or one of the other spells for a greater extension. Um, this one can also be like act as like. This one is actually not bad because this one allows you to just special summon, um, combine creation without losing all that advantage that you would have had from its effect. And um, so I guess this one might be a good one to add. Um, if you really want to and the another plus of like having this out is that like helps turn on a lot of the good the really good effects of some of these monsters like I think the lower level guys yeah the lower level guys have the discard effect that you can only use if you actually control the level 11 guy also it's really cool that has 5,000 back in defense that's crazy yeah, this one takes control of a monster but you need that guy and then this one doesn't have anything and also the spells are trash or at least some of them become a little bit better when you actually have the level 11 as well like this one allows you to destroy two cards instead of just one which honestly pairs really well with the horned dragon because you just destroy the horned dragon um, and then you get like to pop three cards and then technically that way you can pop four if you actually control the level up and guide two and then this one this one can allow you to negate effects um, like when, when while you have the level 11 guy and having it lose 4,000 even if it the cool thing is that you can keep having it lose so it kind of just basically makes it so that the this guy kind of becomes like a five trigger Appaloosa in a way so that's kind of cool so it may, kinda makes up for the fact that you're not even allowed to use that blue side, I guess. Um, and then of course the x deck monsters aren't too bad either. Memento and... Of course, Guy and Chimera is always nice. Though it does make it so that you can't even really like get, get the, spe the shuffling back effect because you actually have to use ones from your hand and grave or from your hand or field so you can like get the effect of this guy yes this one won't allow you to get the shuffle back but its effect is still pretty nice I think it's worth it sometimes if your opponent has a board presence and then especially if you can get also get a game utilizing him unfortunately you're not playing any polymerization so you won't ever be able to um, protect him from targeting but it's still a good effect that he has. Um, and then Twin Dragon can just give you even more advantage by give, allowing you to add two mementos instead of just one. That's really nice. Um, and a few of these, and, and a few, and the mementos at least like being in the graveyard. This kind of makes me think of like an alternate reality sort of, um, Unchained deck since this one also has a lot of effects that are destroying your own cards. Um, but I mean, of course, they're not, I don't think, as useful as in Chain in that regard because they usually aren't gaining a bunch of advantage from being destroyed by card effects. But they still like being in the graveyard, so that's cool. Um, 
and then so you have a little bit X and then there's a little bit extra copies of stuff since it's not as much as many like in arc type X deck cards as the last one but there might be more added in the future this is um, definitely a newer deck than the Unchained is so there's definitely room for more cards to be added in the future Azalea I mean you do are, you are running enough spells that you might be able to eventually but you are like banishing them too so you might not, not always be able to keep her but if you can keep her she has another useful effect that allows you to destroy an opponent's monster but that does get rid of the banishing effect of the memento cards luckily this only checks right on the special summon so you don't have to worry about later on if like the banishing trigger of her effect causes you to have less than three spells but maybe keep that in mind like maybe before you activate fusion you could bring her out first if you really want to bring her out so she's kept on the field otherwise you might not have enough spells anyway unicorn two it's just a nice overall card for getting rid of stuff, spinning them back in the deck, which is always nice. And that's pretty much a deck there. Oh yeah, and then there's also Forge Build Goods in here because of the graveyard effect spells or traps. Probably usually sending um fusion with this card, but maybe if your opponent just has a simp like not a lot of life points and it just takes one piercer piercer to get to take them out maybe you could just send the bone back instead if you already have a bunch of monsters set up <laughs> and you just really need that piercing um oh wait bone party is the one that gives piercing Oh, this one can also just... Ooh, that's nice. It's special summons mementos. This could be a good one to have in the graveyard for during your opponent's turn, though. Because then your opponents may be worried ab wary about um, moving mementos out of the grave. Though it might not be as as common because Call by the Grave is one also one of the cards that got banned. Anyway, and I don't think Monster Reborn is a super popular card either. Unfortunately, it has to be your opponent actually doing, being the one moving. If it was you or your opponent, that could be really nice because it can pair pretty well with this one. Since this one will allow you to best summon one of your own whenever a memento gets destroyed by battle card effect. It, it this also pairs pretty nicely with your own effects that like to destroy stuff and it's pretty easy to go into too so I suppose there's kind of that that helps makes the kinda allow the mementos can to kind of do a unchain impression though not as well still I would say anyway in say 54 minutes will be memento gameplay it might be pronounced memento but I kinda like saying memento just rolls off the tongue easy I think it's not like there's there might be but I don't know I think people in the same because there's only one memento-esque and and some of these aren't even memento -er. some of these are literally memento with something else so I think some of them has to say you adding a memento cause so maybe it is supposed to be memento but like I guess memento -er and memento -to something is a way to extinguish the monsters from the spells and traps yeah, this is always a nice pickup first thing. Because I'm almost always guaranteed to be able to spell summon it if it's one of my early cards. And then I can 
And then using its effect is always nice, as long as it doesn't get negated, hopefully it won't. Yeah. Unfortunately, the destroy effect is a part of the effect, so you can't just destroy as cost. So it's still vulnerable to stuff like infinite opponents. But luckily, my my opponent can't be playing that. But they might still have some hand traps in hand. This one could also act as a way of like, but. I mean, maybe not so well for this one, but the anguish is good for that. This can act as a way to, um, if your opponent targets something with like effect veil or something. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, so I might as well destroy itself. And then I can get... I mean, that's not too bad. I mean, besides the... That's one of the high-level mementos, anyway. Send that one. I think I usually like to send the... I could send the level ones, though. I think I like to send the anguish. Add the anguish back to hand. Though this one can also just get the anguish out. So I think I'd rather just go for the level ones. Might as well send as many as I can. Going for this one. This one is a hard once per turn, so might as well send. I think this one. I might want that one to be kept in the grave, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Okay, now I can go for this. And then I can destroy that. Should be fine, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I forgot that I would use that my normal summon. Oh well. Oh wait, it's special summoning it. Okay, yeah, it's so fine. I don't know what I was okay, might as well go for the anguish effect now. Adding... I think I really like adding this one, just as an added extender later on. Yeah, see, I can already special summon it. That's what's so nice about it. It's so easy to be able to just bash summon it right away. It's a... Yeah. This allows me to add a memento card. I think I'm going to go for the one that can special summon the... If I were to special... Oh, wait, this can actually only destroy two of my opponent's cards because one of the cards that's destroyed has to be one of my mementos. That's right. I could potentially destroy the horn with that. I don't know if I want to just. But maybe I will. I don't know. I think I'm just going to destroy itself. And then this one will allow me to add. I kind of I like the field spell though. 
field spell is nice. Probably should just go for a length first. Yeah, it's really easy to just like, <laughs> I mean, that's barely like a additional thing you have to do, like, because your opponent, but that's a reason why maybe you wouldn't want to go for the fusion right away. But if you're going for the, um, guy in Chimera, probably doesn't matter all the time. I think I'm just going to. Oh yeah, cross sheep is probably good. Maybe. Although I like the azalea. There's not enough yet though. Maybe I'll just wait. Yeah, maybe I'll just go for the goblin. And then maybe I should go for the this one. I have a graveyard effect. Oh yeah, that one. Actually, this one might be nice. I can just use up the got the ash blossom. Destroy two. Not sure if it's game, but I think I will do that. Oh, wait. I don't want to do that. I'm just going to do this then. Um, I guess I could use one of my graveyard effect monsters. Grab. Just going to use that. Go for this. This one. Dang it. Man, I'm running out of time again. Um. I don't know. That. Crap. Dang it. And I probably was going to win. That sucks. Oh well, I guess I'll try it again. Okay, this time I'm I've I'll try not to talk through it as much. Yeah, I remember this one is one of the harder ones. It's always that stupid timer. But I understand why they need to have it. This is one of the reasons I don't like playing games like this, though. I don't like the timer. The timer is, is just too much. Kind of like why I'm wondering if I should even try to do competitions anymore. I mean, it's probably easier when I don't have to worry about, like, doing a bunch of talking, too. It pro it's probably a little bit harder also with the streaming, but... So, um, this one actually has to be destroying a monster, unfortunately. This is a really bad, because all of these kind of require me to have a monster. 
Oh, Sakana is good. I guess I might as well just set it up. Hmm. Probably just set the two traps. My opponent might be playing a lone deck, so that may ma help make it a little bit better. I don't know which um, lone deck is the most prone to bricking, though. I think usually Konami does a pretty good job of making sure they don't brick too often. No, it's not. You see, it's it's so weird. Like, I wonder why do my opponents like to play with no card sleeves? That's kind of weird. Maybe it's because I'm just in the of the rank I'm in, but I'm not too low of a ranking. I mean. I'm like one away from platinum. I don't think that's too low. Might as well. Yeah, usually Salamangates can just OTK you, so. I think I'm just gonna surrender. I've played against Salamangates to know that usually they can just OTK pretty easily. And it's not like I can do anything to stop that. And it looks like my opponent had enough that they like easily could. I'm pretty sure Salamangrates got a lot more consistent. So usually, um, if you see a Salamangrate, they're probably gonna OTK you. They can even OTK you through like um, if you like have like, so if you don't really have anything to interact with them. And then they just, you kind of want to make sure you have some ways of interacting them and I had no ways there. This one is better hand. This time, I'm going to try not to. It's nice that you can just destroy themselves, like unlike the Unchained, they don't care if it's just themselves that are getting destroyed. Seriously. Come on. That's really nice. Just make sure with the bone bone back, I think I messed up on this one time. It actually has to be opponent that's doing destroying. Okay, dark conditions. Maybe that won't be too bad. Probably should just destroy the the continuous spell here. It also stops the effect, so it's doubly nice. So they can't like do the looking. Impossible add. It's a little annoying. And also another nice thing is that like it's really easy for me. I think pretty much with any of the loan decks, it's pretty easy for me to destroy the Eternal Soul. This one is the one that negates from, uh, like, targeting effects. I don't know if this can, like, target so. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Damn, I'm just gonna... Should I? I don't know if I should or not. I kind of, I think I want to let it destroy me oh that's kinda nice now I should be able to destroy the bone back come on bone back what the heck am I not just I don't get it 
Why why was I able to activate the bone back? They were face up. Oh, does it not count by bow? It should specify. <laughs> it must not count by battle, but that's technically by uh by an opponent's card. It's technically still because of an opponent's card they they were attacking into me. Oh well. Now I know, I guess. Oh, that's nice. It allows me to reset. I didn't even notice that before because I never was able to proc it before. So now I get another activation of the fracture. And I know the perfect card to destroy. Ah, oh, man. Or they can just end up negating it. That's probably pretty smart. Well, I could just bait them to negate something else and destroy their eternal soul with the uh, fracture. That could be good too. If I can have them negate my field spell, then I can destroy their eternal soul, which is probably the one I want to hit more anyway. Hmm. I think what I'm going to do... I think I need to activate this because then I can get in the graveyard. They're probably not going to negate it. Oh, they're not? Wow. Okay. Sure. Okay. My opponent could just negate that, but I'll take it. <laughs> there we go. Now I won. So now I'm on the last one here. I don't know which one is my least favorite. I mean, they all have fun things about that. I mean, being able to pretty easily go into a 5,000 attack monster can be pretty nice. But I think I might just like the Unchained the best. Because it's the arguably easiest play, at least according to Konami. And also, I mean, if it's already pretty good against one of the other top decks, that's an added bonus. Maybe not that exact build, but it's still probably decent enough against the top deck. Which I haven't really seen a lot of the Dimorphia, but maybe I'll run into them. But I'd rather just play my own deck usually. And this is one of the cases where I just play my own deck. I don't know how great my own deck is, but... Maybe I could try the Unchain a little bit more. I don't know. Kind of like the deck that I'm using, though. Though maybe I should play more of the Unchain. I don't know. <sighs> anyway, um, this is the final Lona deck here. So... I'll put this as 1 hour and 14.30. Um, we'll be on consuming ven Venomous Dragon. The deck description here reads, A Predator Plant deck that also utilizes monsters on the opponent's field for a strategy. Fusion summoning becomes easier if you leverage the pendulum effects of Predator Plant 
full lecula and predaplant type triantis. So stop by fusion summoning predaplant ambulo melades to prepare your plays. Additionally, placing predator counters on monsters on the opponent's field during your plays can set the stage for utilizing various predator plant cards. Understand the situation on the field and in graveyard and secure victory with overwhelming power. I still think maybe the Unchained deck has a little bit of an easier time getting rid of monsters. Like, it's a lot easier just to like be able to like use them for link plays because this one requires a little bit of setup you actually need to have the super polymerization you still have to use some of your own mo I mean technically you can get rid of more monsters than you can with just a single simple link play thing but I mean it's nice that you do have a few things that you can like um not just a super monopolization, but you ha also have this for potentially getting rid of opposing monsters without actually destroy them. And it's nice that you can easily send them to the graveyard of Verde to do it that way. Um. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. And the nice thing about if you send the super monopolization is I don't think you actually need to discard. Which is pretty nice. But you still need to make sure there's a Predator Plant. Which there will be with the Verde Anaconda. So you can still use the Fusion pretty easily. And then I think with the Lone Fire. Sometimes you want to like try to go through all of them. But I think with this deck. You want to just go th for your next Special Summon right away. I think another good reason to maybe do it that way. Is I'm not sure if you're going to how easily this deck plays around Nibiru anyway, but at least that's less special summons for Nibiru. Honestly, I don't know how good it is to like go through one lone fire into another lone fire into another lone fire. Because you're just giving the Nibiru opponent, if they happen to have Nibiru, more summons so that, so that they can just Nibiru you even earlier. Um... I guess if you can play around it really doesn't matter anyway, but it's eh, still. And then this one is the one you're wanting to spell summon off of the Lone Fire most of the time. Because then you can go for the Dalantonia Cobra so that you can another way to add any polymerization or fusion. That's one nice thing about this deck is there's a lot of ways you can add any of the polymerization or fusion spells, including the super polymerization. So this is one of the few archetypes that can actually search for Super Poly, which is really nice. So it matters kind of even less that's at one. Um, also the fact that you have a few additional ways like this one allowing you to also use the opponent's monsters. I mean sure you, it requires a little bit of setup but eventually you can. And then some of the fusion monsters are actually pretty good too. Like you can use monsters during your opponent's turn, and then you and and then or you can use monsters during your turn, their monsters during your turn, and then you can further restrict their plays with some of your nice fusion effects, since some of them, ha since a few, quite a few of them have quick effects, nice quick effects. Negation, negation, this one can negate summon, special summons, this one can just destroy all s special summon monsters, which can be kind of nice, especially since it only destroys your opponents. And then this one can basically make it so that like maybe your opponent does want to try to get rid of your board because Chimera Flasia can just like gain advantage off of that. And then Anima can be nice if your opponent happens to place a monster in the wrong. But usually th a lot of opponents don't play into this so Anima might not come up a lot but when it does come up it can be really nice especially when that is basically what wins you the game 
Anyway, I think I'm going to go into the 1 out of 20 now is when I go into it. So I'm just going to say Preda Plant. Preda Plant Gameplay. Let's do this. Okay. And I might have some time for some solo mode duels at least. Maybe through going through a lot of the loner decks at least. Loner deck portions at least. Maybe I could just finish up the... I don't know. I might go through the stories as well. And then that way I can just have the non-loner decks. Maybe that I can make another stream. I don't know. I don't want to get rid of all of them too quickly, but... Since there's three more gates coming, I don't think they're here yet, though. So at most I have, like... Actually, that may be good. Maybe I can do some of the my deck gameplay with the Eldritch to show that off. Anyway, um... I should go for the Lone Five first. Oh yeah, and then there's a continuous spell also that can spell summon a Predator Plant from your hand or graveyard. But if you spell summon it from the graveyard, it negates its effects. The nice thing about that is that it's not once per turn. So if you um, or it's not a hard once per turn. So if you place more than one down, you can do that multiple times, which is nice. This is why I like to, why I wanted to put, save him in my hand so I can send it and get out the Darlingtonia Cobra. And luckily my opponent didn't negate this. I'm not sure how many ways I have of being able to get its effect off, but it's probably at least a few. Ultra Polymerization could be pretty nice. Because then my opponent can't respond to it. This deck doesn't actually play the... Funnily enough, interestingly enough, this deck doesn't actually play the Guardian Chimera, so you don't have to really worry about palm getting Polymerization to your graveyard as soon as possible. The original one, because I think that's... Like, it only cares about the original. Which one is one of the other best ones? Though? Maybe the Chimera Flasia. I don't know. This one is probably the best, yeah. I think I gotta go with the Ambulo. Or I could go... F yeah, I'm gonna go for this one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for the ultra polymerization here. Put it in the fence, because it has high defense. This one allows me to add basically anything. Most of the cards that I have in my deck. Except for a select few. Ooh, that Predaponyx is pretty nice. I think I'm going to go with a Predaponyx. This is a continuous spell I was talking about. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, see, it's also good because it has that nice graveyard effect. What is this one? Ooh, this allows me to special summon a Preta plant, so I get rid of one of my guys, one of the guys with zero stats anyway 
tribute it, special summon. I think I usually like to go for this one because this has an if it sent to the graveyard effect. I don't think I can miss the timing either, so that's nice. So I might as well go for the Burning Anaconda, I think. So now I can add To accept itself. Um. Oh, that also has an effect to be able to add add one, but it has to be sent from the field to the graveyard. Hmm. I don't know. That's kind of nice that like... So maybe I'll just... I don't know. I think maybe I'll just go for another Orphus. Yeah. Might as well go for the Predaponics now. Special summon one. I guess I might as well special summon this. Oh, I could special summon that one from my hand and get the ad. I wasn't even thinking. I might as well do this though. And then I get to add a... And then I might as well just go for one of the traps. I think this one. Probably the polymerization. And then I might as well go with the quick effect negator. Wait, what? Oh, wait. Yeah. Dang it. Dang it. Come on. Yes, okay, wow. Just barely made it. Oh, uh, I should have kept one of them in hand. Well, maybe my pony won't do much. Okay. Actually, no, this is fine because I have a way to add a card. Because this one will allow me to send the one that will add me a card, so it's fine. So I'm just going to do this. Um, this is the one. And now I'll be able to... I think I'll add the one... Yeah... Actually, now I think about Link Rebo plays pretty well with this deck because you make all of your monsters level 1. And then you can just tribute them off for Link Rebo and Grave. So that can be pretty nice. Just gonna go for adding that. So 
fine though. So now I have the card I need for the Super Poly. Okay, there's the blue eyes. Can't negate that though. So now I might as well negate that. I think I should. Yeah, so I'm negate it. Place an encounter that which will also negate it. It's a fact. It should. There we go. Good. Now I might as well just do this. I don't know. Um. Oh, good. You gotta be kidding me, it's because that stinking trap. Whatever. I think Link Reba is usually the one you want to go for off of the Biz Bit Bla Bliss because it, then you can like get, get the Link Reba adventure in the grave, which is kind of nice. <laughs> just special summons it, so I can just go for the. This is another way to make sure I get the or Orphis Scorpio in. Hmm. Guess who restricts me from being able to Yeah, so I can only spell summon fusions now, but that's not too bad. Oh, yeah, I have to send the uh, Ash Blossom. That kind of stinks. But it's still probably worth it. Probably go for the Super Poly, maybe. Seems like that could actually be pretty good. Actually, I go for that. This adds me a Predator Plant Monster. Oh yeah, no, I think... Does this restrict all my special summons? No, only XX summons. So I think I'm gonna go for the... This one. I usually like going for this one. Because then my opponent can respond to this.
Why does it matter too much? Maybe I should stop placing him right there because what if my opponent... Oh yeah, that can also add a spell of trap. That's kind of nice. So this can add the zirconia. Oh, that's kind of nice. That means I can also use that. That can basically just give me another monster as Yeah. I think that should be good. I think I'll go for that ad. And now I'll go ahead and add the... Actually, it's just a once per turn. Yeah. It's a hard once per turn. Yeah, that's not bad. Two more docks. It's not bad. also a graveyard effect. I guess I might as well because then I can just press some in the back. Probably don't want to do that. Now this gets me another s special summon. Probably want to Maybe go for this one, probably. And then... Probably a pretty good idea to special summon this guy. Oh, we know this one. Which will allow me to get another search. Not bad. And I'll go ahead and pen jump scale up this one. And then set these three. So I have a few forms of negation. Plus whatever I bring out of my extract can also be another form of negation. I mean interruption rather, but or my opponent can just do that, of course. But this is fine, because now I can just add the one that will let me special summon. For my graveyard. And then I'll be able to bring back. Yes. And then now I can just bring back the one of them, so now I'll still be able to use the fusion card. Um, better go with one of the ones that can... I think this one Yeah, that's only Fred of Plant Monster, but this is any card. So that can be really nice. I'll go with that. There we go. And I still have I still literally have the fusion ready to go. Which is very nice because this one can cause my other. Yeah. Because this one. Unless this one doesn't count as a monster, but I feel like it should. I guess we'll see. Hopefully it does, though. Yes, it good, it does. Um. I should probably negate that. To be honest, trying to negate this. Probably also just do the predator planning. Might as well. Mm -hmm. 
And then I might as well send the one that can add the Predator Plant monster. That's not the reason why I want to bring out this one instead. Now I get to add a Predator Plant. Not go for that one yet. Um, probably go for this one. I think. I think I should probably do this in response. Then this calls for three docks, so that's really nice. Ooh, that it actually does seem really nice. Um, this one. Wait, what? Whatever, I guess I'll just use a multi faker. Oh, then target one common field. Destroy. Probably destroy this one. I guess I'll just add that one. I can't really think. Whatever. I don't know. Probably wasn't the best one. Well, at least it... Okay, yeah, maybe that was fine. That might have been fine. I guess I'll just go for the... I think I'm just going to go for this one.
not game, but whatever. I don't really have much time to think about it. Maybe I'll get lucky and my opponent won't have anything though. Seven hundred life points left. Please don't have anything. Ah, that's annoying. Whatever. Diabell Star. Stupid timer. I'm not gonna negate it. Good, I'm glad they didn't have enough. Oh, thank goodness. Because I deserve to win that one anyway. Like, the stupid timer was the only thing getting in the way. So I'm glad I won it anyway. Now I can move on to my own deck. Which might be just as much of a struggle or maybe I'll get lucky and it won't be that would be better that would be nice at least the solo mode I don't have to worry about my I don't have to worry about the timer which is especially nice but also the decks my opponent plays aren't nearly as difficult to beat. I wouldn't have mu as much of a problem with ranked mode if it wasn't for the timer, but I understand why it's there. Anyway, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I mean, maybe without the timer I might even be willing to get up to master rank, but I don't know. Maybe even then I wouldn't. Seems like I'm almost done with Illusion of God, which is kind of cool. Um, this is my ninja deck. Ninja... A lot of you might recognize this because this is basically just a copy and paste of my... Um, of the basically the deck I was playing in. Um, that one solo mode with the sub tiers, but... I mean, with a few differences, either because of ban list or because I decided to make some changes. Like, I took out that sub tier link monster because I didn't think I needed that. And I just put in extra copies of the fusions. Might have even taken out, like, Appaloosa or something. But, I mean, of course, Appaloosa, IP, SP would all be nice in this deck, but unfortunately, I couldn't have them. I guess this deck uh, works pretty well. Like, if I'm going first, I can maybe try to set up my Zen for another special summon off of his effect. And then if I'm going second and my opponent has stuff, I can always go for Yagmaru to go for a non-destroy banish, but unfortunately it does target, so against any like effects that prevent targeting, it can still be kind of useless. But, still be nice. And then this is also a way of being able to also destroy cards without banishing for the ones that don't really matter as much and then of course there's also the fusion destiny package because I'm playing the destroyer phoenix enforcer because that's pretty nice if I simply if I can't get out the ninjas then that can be the next best thing of course out uh, the sub tears maybe if my if I need to book a moon anything maybe I could just put in regular book of moons but I think I kind of like the sub tier package of small sub tier package that's there maybe could afford to put put in an extra guru but I only have the two 
I, th I still think it's fine when one trusts two gurus. And then of course these two can be pretty nice. Um, what's especially nice is I could make one of my opponent's monsters a ninja with this effect, destroy something, and then tribute that ninja, and then that can kind of be a way to bypass the whole... This doesn't target though, so that can be pretty nice. But I do have to... I think I can just equip it still even, because this technically wouldn't target either. So I guess that's kind of a way to bypassing the targeting thing, but it kind of has to be specific. Kind of I need these cards have been have been set, and I might have I probably already activated them because like they're just good cards in general. This one's probably a little bit better because this one can be allow me to special summon a whole bunch. Usually what I like to do is like with a level four because that's usually the about the level I can like tribute one of my level four guys at least go for to buy one of them in face up in case I'm deciding to use his effect one in face down and then a Mitsu in case I want to use her effect um, her of course being in face up as well and then maybe I could one, one thing maybe I was thinking about is maybe I could play a link three just so I could like make sure my access code is a little bit more offensive so maybe I could see what link threes there are unfortunately these aren't level seven so and I only want to use him for the spe for the link summon of the black lesser soldier Unfortunately, this just misses the mark as well. It would be so nice if it didn't, though. Hmm. Ah, that one's probably a bit too hard to go into. I don't know how good decode is. Power code. No, I'm just not running enough cybers. This one might be decent though, the power code. I'm not really playing on Ignisers. Yeah, I'm not playing a firewall link. Oh yeah, unicorn. I forgot about unicorn. That's probably a good one. Probably should just play unicorn anyway. So probably unicorn as my link three. And if I'm playing unicorn, I should probably just play the and then I can just get rid of one each of the ninja guys here. And then what I can do is I can play Unicorn and I can also play the other Nightmare card, the Nightmare Phoenix. Or I could... I could even play Griffin since I have quite a few... I mean, it might be kind of annoying. But, I mean... I don't know. Griffin might be kind of cool. Maybe if I can happen to go into that. I don't think I really need Phoenix. I think Griffin is kind of just better at this point. I mean, I have a lot of spells or traps I'd be wanting to get back anyway, so... That's just another way of being able to put them back. So that's also kind of useful. Of course, I have a few traps that, like the whole like can activate them that turn doesn't matter with yeah that seems good and of course I have this standard three six seven eight do I have the standard nine hand traps maybe I don't 
Huh, I thought I, I thought I did, but I guess I don't. So I better try to get in the standard nine hand traps I like. Then what do I get rid of? Definitely not Guru. Kinda like the Mitsu a lot too. It's hard to say. This one's really nice. Guess I'll just I guess I could check the ninja breakdown real quick. See what I can get rid of. Some people and running 41 isn't too bad anyway, but. I guess I could technically just run with two of the Hanzo. Maybe I could do that. Yeah, that might be good now. That seems fine. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with that. That seems good enough. Now I have my stand nine hand trap lineup that I like. Okay, so now. Let's do one hour and 57. Maybe I'll just end it after the duel here, actually. I don't know. Maybe I could just do another live stream for the gates since kind of getting behind. Maybe people can let me know if they want to see that. So I'm just going to say Ninja. Sub tier gameplay. Yeah, I think I'm going to pretty much end it after this. I don't want this stream going too long. And I feel like two ads probably enough time. Maybe next week I could just do a two-hour live stream dedicated to trying to catch up in solo mode a little bit more. I don't know. Then again, I'm, I could probably just do the live stream for Dole Trout plus the gates because that way then I'll definitely have enough time for both that seems good because the Dole Trout might be there next week and then I could just and then that could more justify a, a stream anyway because otherwise like kinda doing a stream on just one or the other may not make as much sense but if I make a stream for both of those things, that may make it a little more sense. So I guess I pretty much just do it like this here. I'm not sure what happens though, like if I... If I flip this up with the final battle where I still be able to do the Guru, I guess we'll see. Only thing that sucks about the Guru thing is that the hidden city doesn't actually count as a sub tier card so if I just simply have that plus guru I can't actually make guru into a quick effect I ha basically have to waste an activation of the final battle I guess we'll see now I guess we'll see what happens this might be the vicious astronaut oh wait looks Oh yeah, I think Heroes is also pretty popular. That makes sense because... I mean, of course... Um, Heroes being a pretty pretty good... Fu I mean, they do have a lot of different fusion monsters. Oh yeah, I also hear Heroes might have been really good in the Limit 1 Festival because they have so many monsters that they can basically just be one archetype still. Even when just everything limited to one. Which is pretty good. Huh, I wonder what would happen.
Maybe I'll just let it. Stinks. Okay, going for the Ferris. Now I kind of have to activate it. Now I'll see what happens though, if I'll still be able to activate the Guru. Nope. Nope. It, it goes. It resolves before I had the chance. Okay, well, that's good to know, I guess. Ah, uh, come on, really? I'm pretty sure my opponent's just gonna win at this point. I wonder if I should even just bother. I'm getting a little hungry too. Maybe I'll just surrender here. I want to get through the rest of this stuff. cool thing about surrendering when it comes to festival is, is that it doesn't really I mean I suppose it loses you 50 medals and maybe the chance at a few missions but overall it doesn't really matter that much not like surrendering in ranked where like especially if you're in the higher ups I mean if you're in the low ends like gold and stuff it really doesn't ma matter but like plan them up it kind of does because like I mean you do get penalized for lo for losing and surrendering does count losing so I think I'm just gonna ash blossom or should I infinite impermanences? I think I'm gonna infinite impermanence because my opponent might have a spell way of like adding something. Cause I know this loner deck would. Okay, my opponent didn't really have much. So that's good. I almost wonder if I should just get rid of this. Maybe I could. I kind of just like the sub tears though. thinking I could have destroyed that. Dang. Whatever.
think I better try to get this. this is My opponent can just turn and face up again. I wasn't thinking. Uh, yeah, maybe it's better if I just make it more pure ninja. I think I'm just going to surrender. I think, yeah, maybe I will just make it more pure ninja. But maybe I could still keep the... But making it more pure ninja does have its perks. It means I more likely have... I mean, basically what I can do is I can add an extra copy of the Hanzo the Mitsu take out these take out the hidden city kinda showed enough of that I just don't know how I feel anymore about the sub tier it's kinda nice I have like a negation but like with all of the floodgates, I don't know if the sub tears are nearly as good. Maybe next a copy of Tabari. I'll see what the ninja death breakdown likes. Yeah. That seems to be okay. Um Going to the deck breakdown. I mean, this is 60 card build, but whatever. I don't think I have the speed winning. I don't know how. Then again, this build is with the Mikonko, so that's another thing you can do. That's probably pretty smart, I guess, anyway, because Mikonko's. I mean, the core spell is already pretty good, so now you have a way to search for it. But I'm sure pure ninja is also okay. Think nice thing about running Kaga get more Kagero is that I have more of a chance of being able to go into my ninja fusions earlier. So I kinda like that. Um Hmm. Yeah, I think the spells or traps are fine though. Book of Moon kind of works well with the uh, duplication and, well, at least the dancing leaves because this can just tribute a face down defense position monster. And also has good, acts as good disruption anyway. So maybe I'll play Book of Moon. Unfortunately, Maxi is once again banned, so you can't use Maxi in this festival. Oh, so I totally would have. Could also go with Book of Eclipse, but that also requires a discard. So I don't really like it as much. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like the Eclipse as much. But Book of Moon is fine. And I guess I could run Triple Tactics. There we go. That should be good enough. If I run one Triple Tactics, that should be fine. There we go, that seems good. 
That seems okay. I think the whole Predator plant, destroy things and forces is fine. Suppose another nice thing about destroy things and forces is you could target the Tabari that can't be destroyed by card effect when it's special summon and then target another monster or target a card your opponent controls. The Tabari won't be destroyed but the other monster but the other card will, so that's kinda cool. Um, yeah, I think that's good enough. I could even play three. But I kind of like having extra, because then it kind of gives, helps fuel up the access code. I can't, so I kind of like the things in Force Engine. I'm not sure how, how often I'll go into it, but it's nice to have. I think maybe I'll play less Book of Moons though to put in Triple Tactics because Triple Tactics can be pretty useful. And I, th I still think there's probably enough. Oh yeah, I forgot about Nibiru. Maybe I could also play that. Maybe I could even play... Uh, two triple tactics and then one Nibiru that seems pretty good as well yeah I, I kinda like that yeah I like that this could also be useful in case I need to flip one of my mo own monsters down in case I want to get the flip effect later. And since I only have one hollow book of moon anyway. That seems fine. Nah, yeah, whatever. I need to get back to live on my computer. Reinforcement, not bad. Think I which oh I guess that's not a I'm just gonna go for Hanzo. It's kinda nice. I'll go for Hanzo here. And then I can add the one that special summons itself whenever it's at a hand. This one. Not bad. I get to add back the to a buy then, which is pretty nice. And now I can go for the could go for the ninja grandmaster Sizo. Hmm. I think that's actually better. And then this will allow me to set one of my ninjutsu arts. 
Could go for Hidden Village or... I think I'm gonna go for the Hidden Art Notebook. That's just so good. And then go ahead and special summon this one and then I'll go and normal summon the Tabari now I'll use the link and the Tabari to go for the Mizen yeah I like this Sprite Elf though. Sprite Elf is kind of... Sprite Elf is honestly kind of nice. I think I'm gonna go for Sprite Elf. Yeah. Now I can go for Mitsu. And then I can use the Mitsu and the Tabari now to go for the Mizen. And then I can always special summon the Mitsu during my opponent's turn with the Sprite Elf. So that's pretty nice. And now I can make it so that my opponent can target the Mizen. Which is also really nice too. Nice. Cool. Hopefully there's no Raigaki though. That would suck. Or even a Lightning Storm would suck too. But actually a Lightning Storm won't be too bad. Because I can just activate Mizen. And then I can just respond with the Art Notebook too. So I think I... Yeah, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go for the Mizen first. Can I not chain block? Okay, now I can chain block with the elf. Special summon the Mitsu. And then I'll go for the infinite impermanence and negate the the core. Ooh, and then I can also go for the notebook. Yeah, I think I will go for the notebook here too. Might as well do the notebook. Boom. And that also chain blocks the infinite impermanence. But maybe I should have chain blocked the notebook. I don't know. There's the ash. That's okay though. Probably put the Mitsu here so it can't be targeted. And now I can just special summon Dash if versus when. I don't think it will be. Yeah, my opponent shouldn't. Then again, maybe I should just go for the. Tabari. No, I think I kind of need to. Yeah, I'm gonna go for the Kagaru here. 
special summon the Tabari. And then special summon the special summon this. Hopefully that doesn't come to bite me in the butt later. Yeah, now this is pretty nice. Yeah, I don't think I even really need the sub to engine. I might not even need the destroyer things in force engine, but I just like it. Ah, uh, that sucks. If my opponent's smart, my opponent will just stack and some me too. Huh. Thank you. Looks like my opponent wasn't... That's good. Glad my opponent actually activated a monster effect. Now I have the to buy for later. Which is pretty good. So I could do a banish when I when I need it. Yeah, I probably should do a banish on the Verde here. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, I think I'm going to try. I'm not sure how this works out exactly, but I'm just going to try it. Hopefully this works out the way I think it should. The way I think it should. I'm not sure if... Okay, good. I I get the effect before my opponent can do the verde. That's nice. Whoo! Yes. Yeah, I think I like I like this a lot because now I'm more likely to be able to go into the ninja, and those ninja fusions are pretty strong. Maybe even stronger than the sub whole sub terror game plan. Because, like, the Guru is just kind of annoying anyway. Because it's like, I don't really want to have to preactive, preemptively activate the trap. But it seems like that a lot of the times that's pretty much what's needed in order to get the quick effect of Guru activation. I don't understand why they made it, it so Hidden City is not a Guru card. Like, would that have really been too strong to have, like, an effect on Hidden City saying like or a clause on Hidden City saying this car is always she has a sub tear card I mean it makes it so that Guru can search for it but is that really so bad that Guru searches for it is that really so bad <sighs> well anyway I think I'm gonna Get the missions here. I think I may be done with the... Yeah, I'm done with the festival missions. That's nice. So pretty much all I have now is just to get to the title reward. Which is pretty nice. But there might be more added. So maybe I could just like go a little bit slower at it. I could probably be done with Mastodol for today though. Um, but I mean of course first I need to do a few more things like first the Bible verse discussion or maybe I'll yeah I think I'm gonna save the packs for last so I'm gonna do the Bible verse discussion first this is about the case so Bible verse discussion so here's the verse um why my soul are you downcast why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. That comes from Psalms 42.11, 
new international version okay so or if you want to also hear what you version has to say about it their um, interpretation is why am I discouraged why is my heart so sad I will put my hope in God I will praise him again my Savior and my God I think it's just a little bit more explained a little bit better explained so I kind of like the new versions of course more a little bit more modern words too why am I discouraged so that's the first thing it says um, so basically saying like why am I discouraged why is my heart so sad so basically discouraged like um, like so first so this is basically a first this happens and then and then I do this and then this happens so Bef the before looks like um, the per the the reader um, or the author here is discouraged and sad because um, they're not putting the hope in God. That's basically what it's trying to say. It's basically the before, like this is what it looks like them not putting their hope in God. So it's not really looking too good for them. But then they do put the hope in God, and so now what happens is that now they have instead of a heart of sadness they have a heart of praise they have now they have a reason to praise because they ha because they can praise God because he is a solid foundation so they're saying like you you're my savior so you're gonna save me from my troubles like because I was discouraged but then you saved me so I don't have to be so I don't have to be sad and yeah, sometimes it's not easy to just like go from this one change to this other change, but um, but it really is a good thing to do. Sometimes you don't need to always rely, and it usually it's better to not rely on your strength, but rather on God's. Anyway, that's my interpretation of it. Of course, if you have a bad interpretation, you can feel free to let me know. You don't. Hopefully, I'm spending enough time. Like, I just. This one's a little bit harder, I feel. I don't know. There's a lot to it, I feel. Like, definitely you could, like, go into, like, a long spiel about this verse. But, of course, I want to get to the other things. But, of course, if you do want to, I'm totally fine with that. Um, especially during a time when I feel more ready to go into a long discussion, then yeah, that's perfectly fine. And if you want to make it public, that's fine too. You can like make it public by putting a um, putting a post within the verse discussion post. I haven't really had a lot of people doing that, but I certainly wouldn't mind people starting. Um, and of course, when I get the Discord going, I'll probably have a, um, like, the Discord within the high tab group, I'll probably have a channel just dedicated to going over verses. Probably do that. That seems good. Anyway, um, if you have a favorite deck, um, you can feel free to post some videos of you playing them within the... Um, comments as well maybe it even if it's the same deck but like maybe people would still like seeing like how a different person would play it because I know I'm not the best Yu-Gi-Oh player ever I'll, I'll admit that but maybe you're you, you were able to play a little bit better maybe this just fits your gameplay a lot more and so you're a lot better at using the deck I mean um, or maybe it's just like a non-loner take of the of of one of the loner decks, and that's fine too. So it doesn't have to be a totally different deck that you show off. I'm sure people would appreciate it just as much seeing a a slightly different spin. Anyway, let's go through the goosebumps discussion now. So let's say two hours and thirty minutes will be. Goosebumps discussion. This time it's Phantom of the Auditorium. So, Phantom of the Auditorium. This time I think, um, the. I, I don't feel like the episode was a blatant mockery of the. 
<clears throat> was a blame mockery of the book. So that's really good. So that's one plus about it. Definitely nice when you have that. Um, but yeah, some differences. I think there were a few things from the episode that I did actually like. Um, I guess I like that they didn't like break as many rules. I felt like they broke a lot more rules in the book. Like they, I don't think they went to school like when they weren't supposed to as much. Um. I guess it was nice a different take on like um like the like there were only a few people when they found the can of paint versus there were a lot of people when they found the can of paint in the locker. So that was I guess a um uh like it it gives you a different perspective which can be nice. Um I don't know, I feel like they were both pretty good. I don't think I can really find many faults this time in the in the TV show or the book. Um, hmm. It was nice actually seeing the trapdoor. Like you kind of get like how it would act would have actually worked. I feel um, cool that like I mean. Of course, it was basically one of those like, um, I mean, I'm I'm not sure exactly how to explain, it, but it was nice being able to actually get a look at like the trap door, like that, like, like seeing it actually in action instead of just reading about it. I think was pretty nice. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of things I forgot about. I think it just like the yearbook. Um, I mean the yearbook was found in a different place, but I don't think that was really. I was like that. That really like um made too much of a mess of either or. I guess it. I mean, I guess it's a little bit less creepy that they found it, um, that, that was in the locker in the episode. I guess it made that part maybe a little less creepy. But I guess it also, like, maybe it also, like, showed, I don't know, because I feel like it was, like, that, I don't know. I've... I don't really know much to say. If anyone like maybe wants to wants to bring up some of their points that they felt like maybe made the book or the show slightly better or worse, you can feel free to let me know, but um I don't think I really found very many faults. Then again, like I'm not sure if this was like one of my most favorite like um, like books ever. I'm not really a huge fan of the opera fan either. I mean, even though it is cool, like the whole like concept of that. Um, but definitely the next book I think will um be a lot more interesting to me. Um, which is a Attack of the Mutant. Like I don't mind comic books too much, and like having I don't mind superheroes either. So. That that may be a bit more exciting. Hmm. Anyway, I guess I'll get to the packs now. I'll just say packs right here. Okay, let's go through the packs. So I'm just gonna mostly focus on the free packs today so this one is with the recipe cards Ooh, I got a UR that's pretty nice don't really care much about the new bell but it's a free UR I'll take it this it's a disenchantable card that I can use for other things 
This one is a little bit more exciting because I do play the Savage Rhymes a bit more. Too bad I didn't actually get an SRUR with this pack. This one might be ni nice as well. Like, do like trap decks a bit more, but didn't really get anything too good. Could have just easily crafted all these cards. Ooh, but I got a hollow crass. I'm not sure how many hollow crasses I have now. This one's nice too because. I mean, I probably didn't need another copy of Golden Land. Would probably would have rather had a Eldritch instead. But I did get another copy of Capture, which I guess could come handy. Although I had I had four of that. Oh, I did. If this would have been an a Hollow, that would have been kind of nice. Okay. Well. And then I guess I'll show you the new accessories. Pyroxene cave, and then there's the icon frame. There's a better look, I guess, more up close look at the brain control. Maybe a more up close look at the pyroxene cave. Here's what it looks like when the opponent's using a different field zone. Here's what it looks like when both players are using the same. And here's a more up close look of the mate space. But I'm probably gonna save my gems. I'm glad I got my gems back up again for the later decks. But I think I'm still gonna call it, it a day on the Eldritch decks I came up with. Because I want to make sure I have enough gems for the... F I mean, especially with these new gates coming out, I want to make sure I still have a good amount of gems for creating the other decks I'm planning to make. Whatever they may be for the my deck tools for the other gates. Anyway. Um. Kind of already have one in mind for the Axe Sabers. So that's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, not, I'll have to come up with the other ones later on. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all enjoyed the look at the festival um, decks. You still have until the 28th, so you still have like five days or something like that left to get the um, dolls that you need done with. Um... And I wish all of you luck in the festival. Um, you can let me know how you feel about any of the loner decks or how you feel about the deck that I came up with. Um, what you think about the sub terror with the ninja versus just playing it pure. Or maybe if you have any other favorite archetypes that you like to combine with ninjas. Like... Ninjas is a pretty cool archetype. Like, I feel like there's probably a lot you could combine with them. Um, I mean, probably there's, like, a lot you can combine with a lot of other archetypes, too. That's the nice thing about archetypes. Um, even the ones that kind of have summoning restrictions, you can kind of find ways of being able to get around it, I feel. Um, like, maybe, like, Go for the cards that don't give you the summoning restriction first, and then later on, when it doesn't matter, go for the cards that do. Anyway, um, bye everyone, and just as a reminder, please like, share, and subscribe. I want to thank everyone who did come here, any lurkers who did come here, even though no one commented. I'm so thankful for the lurkers, or anyone who wants, who needs to get caught up on the stream. Um, I'll probably leave it, um, as not private for at least a day to give people plenty of time to, um, watch it today if they want to catch it today, or I can, and, and then I can just, yeah, and then I can just make it as the, 
as the video like tomorrow or something try to like not but I don't want to make it private for too long because I don't want to annoy people too much so I kind of like doing it that way to try to just because the main reason I make it into a video is because like I don't know it looks it looks nice to me and I can actually add a, th a nice thumbnail I could probably do a nice thumb yeah I can do a nice thumbnail with the live but also it puts in the videos tab which is like the main thing um but yeah anyway hope you all enjoyed um and I hope you all um and I hope a lot of you attend maybe um my next stream or whatever I decide to do next week I hope you enjoy whatever uh, I decide to make the next video into I'll probably do another one I might do another one next week especially I will definitely do one um next week if it's a dual trial but I'll probably do one anyway because when I'm trying to get caught up with the solo modes anyway but anyway bye everyone and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend